In the first video of this module, we'll be considering selection weights uh, for routing entities. And the example we're going to use here is a TV adjustment inspection facility where you can see that TVs arrive at the rate of 20 per hour and they go through an adjustment. And the adjustment takes uh, approximately two minutes uh, with the processing times being uh, uniformly distributed. Following adjustment, the TVs go through inspection uh, and inspection requires uh, approximately 1.7 five minutes. Twenty percent of the inspected TVs are found to need readjustment and so they return from inspection uh, back into adjustment. And for our system we're going to assume that uh, TVs that fail inspection will be treated just like uh, new TVs coming into adjustment. So they'll be readjusted at the same uh, using the same processing characteristics. Similarly they'll have the same probability of failing uh, a subsequent time when they get to the inspection stage. And for this system, we're interested in the typical queuing type metrics, uh, time that TVs spend in the system, the number of TVs uh, in the system, and the utilizations of the adjustment and inspection stations. Before we start building our initial model, uh, I want to look at uh, a static model that we can use to answer our verification question. So recall, uh, verification is the process where once we complete the model, we need to go through a process to ensure that the model behaves as we expect it to. And so for this model we're going to use a standard uh, tandem queuing model. And so I have the basic version here uh, where I have the arrival rate of 20 per hour and which corresponds to an inner arrival time of three minutes. I have the uh, capacity of our inspection and adjust, the processing time in minutes, the corresponding processing rate uh, utilizations number and station and at time and state waiting time. What we haven't considered yet is the effect of this failure. So in effect what's happening is when TVs come in and inspect um, some proportion of them fail. And so what the adjustment sees is an arrival rate uh, higher than the nominal arrival rate of 20, for, 20 per hour. So we have to account, account for the fact that entities uh, uh, have re-entrant flow. Similarly, if the adjust uh, station ends up being stable, in other words, if it can handle all of the arrivals from outside along with the arrivals uh, from the inspection station, the failures, then the inspection station will also see uh, the same arrival rate. So the first question is, how do we account for that? And what we have here is what's called a reentrant flow where we have a nominal arrival rate that I have here is lambda, and we have a probability of p that uh, entities flow back and through the system. And so it turns out that we can easily compute this effective arrival rate, which I have listed here as lambda prime. So the effective arrival rate that this station sees is equal to the external or nominal rate, lambda, plus p times lambda prime. So p, uh, the proportion that uh, uh, enter the station, uh, p proportion fail. And so then we can just simply uh, solve this equation for lambda prime, and we see that the effective arrival rate is simply lambda over 1 minus p. So in our queuing model, we can account for that in what I have listed here as split, at which when we saw the static model before, we recognize as the proportion of jobs that uh, go through this station. So to implement my reentrancy here, where I have my effective arrival rate of lambda prime equals lambda over um, 1 minus p, I simply need to incorporate that into uh, the split value. So I'm going to say this equals 1 divided by uh, 1 minus my rework rate, which is p in our case. And so that turns out to be 1.25%. Similarly, we're going to have the same thing here. 1 divided by 1 minus the uh, split percentage. And now we see the increase in the number in station, uh, I'm sorry, number in system, well, number in station also, and uh, time in system, and our two utilizations. And so this is going to be the model that we will use to verify our initial simulation model. So let's open Simio and build this uh, initial model. And so we have our source, and we have two servers, so our um, adjust and our inspection, and then we have a sync for departures. Go ahead and rename our stations. Adjust, inspect, 
and connect our um, connect the stations and let's use path so we can see the entities flow so we'll go from the source to the adjust from the adjust to the inspect and then from the inspect to the sync and then we have the alternative route for the uh, entities that fail I'm going to then go add my TV entity which I will rename as TV so now we have the source we have our adjustment um, we have our um, inspection and we have our sync and so when we run the model what we expect to see happen is about half the entities flow this way because we as we've said before if we don't do anything else uh, then Simeo will randomly route entities uh, will randomly choose one of the alternatives and so what we expect to see happen is the queue in front of the adjustment to uh, get quite large because we haven't adjusted any of the properties of our um, object instances from the standard library and so we know that by default one uh, server can handle the output from one source and here we're seeing a uh, 50% feedback and so this is uh, from just casual inspection uh, we're seeing what we expect to see so the question now is how do we handle this uh, split uh, the failure pr probability which we said was 20% and so let's look at how Simeo uh, handles that and so in the case where we have uh, a node and we have multiple links emanating from that node, in, that ca in this case I have n uh, links, Simeo uses the selection weights to compute the probability that the entity will take each one of the links. So in particular the probability of selecting link i is simply equal to the weight of link i divided by the sum of all weights. So it's computing the weighted average uh, to determine the probability for each individual link. And note that the sum of the weights does not have to equal 1. In other words, we don't have to specify the uh, individual weights as probabilities from 0 to 1 where they, the, the, all of them together sum to 1. We don't have that requirement. We simply take the individual weight divided by the sum of all weights to compute the probability. So in our model, what we need to do, or one way that we can do that, is set the selection weight equal to 20 there for the inspect and 80 for the uh, sync. So I have uh, selection weight 80 here, selection weight 20 here. So the probability of taking this path is equal to 20 divided by 20 plus 80, which corresponds to the 20% that uh, we wanted. Similarly, the probability of taking path 3 is equal to 80 divided by 80 plus 20, giving us the 80% um, that we expected. So the final thing we need to do for our model, our initial model, is to fill in the uh, object instance properties. And so we are going to have an exponential inner arrival time of three minutes, as we said, corresponding to an arrival rate of 20 per hour. So there's my three minutes. For adjust, we have a um, uniform, uh, uniformly distributed service times, but we're going to use exponential initially so that we can use our static model for validation, or for, I'm sorry, for verification. So let me put that value in. So this is two minutes. So we have a random exponential two minutes. And finally, inspection is random exponential um, 1.75. Random exponential 1.75. One point seven five. So now we have our system, our initial system complete, and we can watch the simulation for a little bit in um, uh, in interactive mode. Speed it up a little bit, uh, and we can see entities arriving, and occasionally we will see uh, an entity fail. So to continue our verification, of course, the first step that we do now is we say, is our model correct? And so to do that, we're going to construct an experiment, uh, a standard experiment that we've done many times before. And for this experiment, I'm going to set the run length equal to 300 hours. And I'm going to set the warm-up period for uh, 100 hours. Uh, 
And then I'm going to define uh, responses for our key performance metrics. So we have a response for the adjust util. So I'm going to say ADJ util for adjustment utility. And of course, that's adjust dot capacity dot scheduled utilization. Same thing we've seen many times before. We will create a response for the inspect util, uh, util INSP util, and this is, will be inspect capacity scheduled utilization. Our timing system for TVs, TIS, uh, and we'll use the TV population uh, timing system average to get that, and TV. Uh, timing system is a time, and let's go ahead and display time units of minutes. That's what we have in our static model. And then our final response will be number in system, and we'll use the population uh, for that also. So TV population number in system average. So we have our standard queuing metrics that we've used before, and now we can run our model. And as we run, we can see that our numbers, are, uh, our response results are coming up, and we want to compare those values to the numbers that we see in our uh, queuing model. So we compare our utilizations and time and system and number and system values, and we see our numbers are close, but they're still not, not really within the range that I would consider to be acceptable at this stage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go look at my response results and try to figure out what the problem is or if there even is a problem. And so in particular, if I look at time and system and compare that with our expectation, so our expectation for time and system is 23.1 minutes, you can see that we have our average value um, here and we have our confidence interval half width and 23.1 is certainly within our confidence interval half width but our half width is fairly wide. So what the first thing I would do in this case is go back and say let's run an additional set of replications and let's go from 10 to 50. Now our 50 replications have completed and we see that the numbers are uh, closer to what we expected uh, the 83.5 versus 83.3, uh, 73.1 versus 72.9, and our time and system, which was uh, a little bit further off last time, is in indeed closer uh, to what we expect. Similarly, if we look at our um, our s'more plot, we can also see that our confidence interval half width is tightened, just as we expect that it would. And so at this point, we could continue running additional experiments if we wanted, or additional replications if we wanted to get even closer. Uh, and in fact, the general method that you should follow is to continue this verification process until you're satisfied that the results uh, match your expectation. At this point, I think I would say that the results do match my expectation, and so I would assume that the model uh, is, is verified and that it behaves as I expect. Now recall when we built the model, we did one thing uh, differently to the model so that we could compare to our queuing model. In particular, the adjustment distribution or the processing time distributions for adjustment, recall, were uniformly distributed rather than exponentially distributed. We made them exponentially distributed solely so that we could use the queuing model to do the verification. And so now that I'm satisfied with my results, I'll go back and change my distribution to uniform. And the uniform distribution was between 1.75 2.25. Was that um, was that right? Let's see. Let's go back and look at our assignment here. So uniformly 1.75 and 2.25. Yes, that's correct. So we go back to our model, and now we have our uh, what we would consider to be our actual model. So. Now that we've made a change to our model, we then again ask ourselves, well, what do we expect to happen? right? Because I've made a change to the model. My model was previously verified, and so we want to uh, develop some expectation of what we think is going to happen here. 
Well, what I think is going to happen is that the adjustment and inspection utilizations won't be affected because changing the distribution of processing times doesn't change the uh, arrival rates uh, or the, the, the overall processing time at average. What I do think will happen is my timing system will go down and my numbering system will go down because I've reduced the variance of the processing time at adjustment. So I have a set of expectations that I've developed and now I'll go in and run the model with the updated parameters. And so now that the model has completed running the 50 replications, we can see that in fact the, uh, the utilizations haven't changed substantially, but as we expected, the timing system and numbering system have uh, both been reduced. So the last thing I want to do in this video is I want to show how we can use a reference property to do a direct comparison between the two scenarios that we just saw. So what we did was we changed the processing time uh, property and then we observed the differences in the performance metrics. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and right click here on processing time and create a reference property processing time on adjust. And so recall when we create a reference property, we see the little green arrow right here. And if we look at the definition properties for my model, we see this uh, property time adjust property. Similarly, in interactive mode, if I right click on the model and look at properties, we see the processing time um, at adjust uh, property and it took the value that we previously had so random uniform 1.75 2.25 also when we go to the experiment we see that value in the controls so I'm going to reset do just a little quick run to get the controls over here where they should be and then I will create two uh, scenarios so the first one that we did was exponential two and let's reduce the number of replications to 20 so it can run a little faster scenario two and this time we did random uniform 1.75 2.25 and so now what we see is we've used the um, reference property as a control and when we run our experiment uh, we can do a direct comparison uh, of the two things of the two scenarios that we uh, checked previously. And now that the experiment has completed its run, we can see that our utilizations are roughly the same and our timing system or numbering system has gone down. And as we've seen before, we can do a direct comparison of the two scenarios using the SMORE plot. So in this video, what we've done is focused on this idea of using selection weights and we indicated that the selection weight, or we showed that the selection weight probability is computed using the uh, individual selection weight divided by the sum of all weights uh, emanating from that particular node. And so when we developed the model, we also went through the process of verifying the model and then using selection or using reference properties to do a direct comparison between our two scenarios. In the next video, we will consider more comprehensive use of selection weights, where in addition to the probabilistic routing that we see here, we can also do conditional routing. So we have a specific condition that occurs that's going to impact the uh, entity routing.